ladies and gentlemen. It's another interview section for Aum Dabi, the president of the Nigerian Baptist Convention, and as well, the president of the Christian Association of Nigeria, uh, His Eminence, Reverend Dr. S.O.A. Ayotunde. Uh, my name is Toba Daramala. Uh, good evening, sir. You are welcome, moderator. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, for our people at home, uh, and for the avoidance of doubt, we want David to just introduce himself lightly so that people at home will know him better. Some people know you to be Baba Ayokunle. Some may not even call you Baba. Some will say Ayokunle, so to say, sir. Some will say Baba President. Some will say Cam President. But we want to know you better, sir. By God's grace, I'm everything they call me. <laughs> but uh, by identity, I'm Reverend Dr. Samson. Allah Sukwadini Ayokunle. Currently, I am the outgoing president of the Nigerian Baptist Convention, the visitor to Bowen University and the 10 theological institutions of the Nigerian Baptist Convention. I'm also the president of Christian Association of Nigeria and the co-chairman of Nigeria Interreligious Council. I am equally the vice president of Baptist World Alliance. I currently serve as the executive member of Baptist World Alliance and the member of the Central Committee of the Baptist World Alliance. I am also a member of the Worship and Spirituality Committee of the Baptist World Alliance. I also serve as a member of Evangelism Commission of the Baptist World Alliance. Uh, by the grace of God, I am also an executive member of the World Council of Churches and I also serve as member of the Central Working Committee, which is the highest decision-making body of the World Council of Churches. Let me start, stop there, so that I don't waste your time with offices. Yes, sir. The, we really appreciate your introduction, sir, because as it is, you are not just uh, a Nigerian person, sir. You are an international uh, preacher, sir. So to say, the co chairman of Nigeria Interreligious Council, and as well, the ESCO member of the World Council of Churches. That's a great case. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yes, can we have a little? We want to know because of those that will be watching us, and because of the students that may be interested in you, sir. Can we have a little, uh, mm -hmm. a little about your background, sir? Maybe your, how you started your early life. Sir. Thank you very much. I started as a village boy. I was born into Jagmalausa village uh, and it's a compound of Oyo town in Oyo state. Jagmalausa village is along Akimari Iware road in the present Avidio local government. But then it was or your local government. I started schooling. I was born over 64 years ago. And uh, I started my primary school when I was above nine years of age at Oni and Baptist Central Day School. So was it the time they asked you to put your hand? Yeah, that was the, I had a disadvantage, you know that, <laughs> because of my stature. My hand couldn't reach my ear, and now up to now, I still struggle to let my hand read my ear because of my stature. So I started schooling late, and because we were going to the village, I mean to the farm, with our parents, uh, our parents were cocoa farmers. Uh, the farm in cocoa, coffee, and other tree crops and uh, also they were yam farmers 
and other varieties of uh, agricultural products. So we were like tractors. We children, we were like tractors that they used to, to farm and also to carry goods from the farms to, to the village for those who will come and buy them. So maybe all those things contributed to my late uh, start of schooling. Yes, and, uh, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. From there, I moved out to do my secondary modern school, not secondary grammar school. So we, you can call my education instrument education. <laughs> it was not straightforward at all, or a meandering education. I had to meander through uh, different wavelengths before I am what I am. But when I was in the secondary modern school, my first year, we had six arms of modern school, modern one students. So at the end of the year, there will be a combined exam for all the uh, arms of modern one. So after that exam, we were about six or two around forty something students. I came first. So one of my 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 teachers, I think at the Bushoy or something, he called me. He said, "Where where where does your father live?" I said, "My father lives in the village." He said, "Oh, no wonder. Why? That's the reason he can send you here. You don't belong to this place." Your IQ is not the same with the people here. You are supposed to be in secondary grammar school. They are just wasting your time here. Who do you have here? Who's your, do you have any relative in this school? I said, yes. I said, I should call, go and call my relative. So I went and called one of my brothers, whom we called Taiwo Faleye. It's, it's late today. And he came and he, and he said, tell the parents of this uh, boy, which I should not see him in this school next year. They are just wasting his time. His IQ is higher than all the people here. So let him, let him get the form of secondary grammar school for him. That's where he belongs. So my father reluctantly, he said, ah, was he the father of the, uh, of the, of the boy? Will he be the one to be paying? I will get one form for you. If you fail, means that you, you, that's the end for you. Uh, in, in those days, we did concessional entrance exam. So different secondary schools, we have different times that you do exam and enter. So we not common entrance. So we did concessional entrance exam. So my father got the form to Orange Grammar School for me. We are my senior brother when uh, Professor Gunkunle. So he got the form of, of that school for me. And interestingly, I did it and I passed. So I left the modern school to go to grammar school the following year. So from there, I proceeded. I finished grammar school and I went to Oliver Baptist High School to do my higher school certificate exam, which is called a level. And uh, from there, I, I did direct entry. I was admitted by director to the University of Ibadan. And uh, in the process between my, my, the year I was finishing my HSC to enter the university, my father died. And that was a terrible blow. However, my brother encouraged me, uh, Professor Ayogunkunle encouraged me to, he just, he just came back from the, from Oxford University with his PhD by that time. Just came back and they encouraged me to, to be hopeful and be ready to enter the university. Uh, he was also very supportive uh, within, the, within his ability. So I entered the University of Ibadan and I graduated with Bachelor of Science degree in Sociology. Uh, from there, 
the journey started, I started moving up and down. Until God called me and uh, went to the seminary. Uh, before we move into that, sir, can we a little about your marital life? Sir? Uh, usually it's a man that proposes. Sir. Uh, that's the custom in Nigeria, sir. How did you meet mommy, sir? Because mommy has been a very solid pillar behind you, sir. What? Want to know yes, he was, he was my junior in the secondary school. Oh, so the, the journey started from the secondary it school? It was my, I, we were about graduating. I was a private in the secondary school. And uh, because I also had early knowledge of Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, when I was in the secondary school, I was one of the people coordinating the student Christian movement. So I was a leader in the fellowship. And uh, by my final year, and I was the only private that didn't have any girlfriend. Uh, maybe because of my religious commitment. However, they as a time, time and water private for the school, I was saddled with the responsibility. I was the one jingling time for change of subject and I will also be the one to take care of the students in the hostess for them to go for siesta to wake up to for, for, to go to preparatory classes to come back everything I was like acting like a dormitory master so that day after I jingle the bell for all the students to go and have siesta before the preparatory class. I wanted to jump to my bed. And the lady's hostel is at the other side. Far away. You can see them when they were going. So I saw her going to the hostel. And I've been, we have been our fellowship, I've been taking care of them. No thought has come to my mind. So she was going to her hostel and I, I saw her back. Uh, since he was the one I've known before, that urge that came upon me that that lady, Gwe, will be your wife. Are you from the same time, sir? No, no not from the same time. She's not from Afiju. She's from Afiju, I'm from Oyota. Okay, yes. That's the, you made your, you are laughing. Oh, you are laughing. Okay, I'm sorry. from Oyota. <laughs> she came from Awe. Okay. Yes. Uh, though they lived in, she lived in New York like life, uh, but while she was growing up, they didn't know her. We never came across ourselves. It was only, uh, I think, in my third year in the in the secondary school that she came to start uh, from one. Uh, and again, interestingly. She used to be very sickly. So, and as a leader in the student Christian movement, whenever she had problems, she became sick or whatever, we were the ones that would be responsible for how to take her home to parents, to take care of her before she would return, etc., etc. So I never thought at all that any deeper relationship would be involved. Until that day. And you know, I was telling you, I wasn't a small boy even when I started primary, primary one. So by the time I was uh, in Form 5, I was already in my 20s. So I just saw her, and the, the thought came to me that, the urge came to me, as it never came upon me before, and it never came again. That, that is going to be your wife. So I couldn't, um, I didn't know how to handle it. Because these are the ladies that, we call them the young girls that respected me as a private in the school, as a leader of fellowship. So ah, it was very terrible. <laughs> very, very, very terrible. So I had to call my friend, I said, this is the urge I had, and I wanted to run away from it. I couldn't escape it. The so strong upon me was, what do I do? 
And he said, well, you better be a man because one day you will speak to a woman. If it is now, you better don't run away. Do it. Because were you shy at that time, sir? I was not shy. I was, <laughs> num I, I was number one, I was religious. Okay. Number two, I was, ego will not allow me to talk to any lady, ego. That is, as a private, I felt that it will lower my integrity. So that was the reason it was difficult for me. But my friend, we call him Matthew, encouraged me. So because Matthew had a girlfriend, I didn't, I didn't have. Partially all of them, but I didn't have. So, and that was almost the time we were graduating. Almost the time we were graduating. But the relationship started briefly before I left school and crystallized them all after I graduated. Yeah. Thank God for your life, sir. Uh, listeners at home, our president says the relationship did not start from the initial, from the onset, mm. but towards the time they are about to graduate. So for students, it's not when you just got admission that you should be looking for life partners. Uh, let me ask this question again, sir. As a visitor to Bowen University, as a matter of fact, the moment you, be, you became the president of Nigerian Baptist Convention, that confirms for you the visitorship of the university, sir. Uh, I want to ask, sir, what are the interesting moments you have had in Bowen University, sir? I think every time I came to Bowen, I've had interesting moments. The wearing of gown. <laughs> <laughs> the, the exotic way in which uh, I've been welcomed each time I went there. The, the procession and the, the banquet that was usually had after each event after each event, and the opportunity to address the students, to be able to pour out my mind to them, my heart, to pray for them. All these things are unusual opportunities that God granted me. And uh, each time I was there also, I had the opportunity of giving suggestions to the management of the university they also open to me, open up to me, to tell me the challenges and what to do. All these things gave me the opportunity of thinking around the box to be able to make the right suggestion, uh, informed in order for, for the university management to take informed decisions. Uh, they, I saw the, every opportunity to be at Bowen as a defined opportunity that should not be wasted and I've always cherished it. Even things you don't can't, you say we are in a gun, mm. which is a very unique concern. Mm. The procession uh, is a good one, sir. So, I've been interesting moments, sir. I, w I equally want to ask you, sir, what are the challenges you have faced? Uh, the, the challenge, number one, the challenge of how to get the university financed. When the university is running low financially, they will come to me at the Baptist building and say, well, the students are on holiday and we need to continue to pay the staff. Uh, the, we, the money can, may not be able to carry us through. How will the convention be able to bail us out? And uh, the convention also is a struggler. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a, but the convention is a proprietor, sir. It's a proprietor, but it has, <laughs> the proprietor has to have money in the post. And uh, you are just have to look for how to get money. 
without any necessarily running to the bank to go and get a loan of, with a compound interest, which would be like slavery. So uh, the challenge of meeting the needs of the university, university education, university, running university is capital intensive. Very, very. The standards are very high that the uh, National Universities Commission uh, wants all the proprietors to meet. So, uh, and the major uh, means by which the university gets the finance is through students' uh, school fees. So you still have the challenge of the Baptist still saying that we are the owners of the school. Why should they give us that type of uh, school fees to pay? We are the owners. We, be, we built it uh, as if one is making one profit from it and is putting some, it somewhere in his pocket. This is a university that we don't need the long vacation that we'll be running everywhere to get money. If we had, had money saved, so that would be happening. Uh -huh. But people don't understand. If they are without the amount of money the student paid, they wouldn't think upon the amount we, we will need to pay every month in terms of uh, salaries and allowances. Then the running costs, apart from the salaries and the allowances, very huge. When you are paying over 200 million every month to staff, uh, that's not bread and butter. <laughs> that's not at all. So the supply must be continuous. Another area was financing the College of Medicine. The College of Medicine itself is like a university on its own. The, the medical, uh, Nigeria Medical Association, uh, or the Medical Council, they have a requirement in terms of equipment, facilities that you need to pro provide. These things are in several millions, if not billions. And you need to look for the money. Unfortunately, you cannot admit many students that want to enter because you have been penciled, I mean, you have been pinned down to a certain number of students you can have. They will say your facilities cannot uh, admit more than that. Using several millions to provide the facilities and for you to ad admit 30 students, 50 students. <laughs> Uh, how will they, they are, they are, they, no matter the amount of they pay in terms of school fees, cannot go around, cannot meet the cost at all. So every month we have to be subsidizing the Bowen University Teaching Hospital in Oboma Shop with uh, around 25 million every month up to today. So uh, meeting all this. Together with, sometimes the time the student will be rioting. Uh, it's another headache. Thank God that uh, he has given us grace over that for a period of time now. But uh, you know that for whooping 10 years, it may not be possible for one not to pass through student unrest once or twice. Uh, the situation in our country, we have many, a lot of infrastructural facilities are not provided, has also made running university education very difficult. You have to provide electricity yourself because the power generating farms or that the one coming from government is not reliable at all. They promise heaven and heart and deliver hair. Yes, they deliver hair. If, you, if any university is relying on the power generated from the national grid, then the, that university should prepare to fold up because the students on rest will not allow it to continue. So these are... This, uh, some of the challenges that we, we have, have met.
let me call it as a if you have had interesting times, you have had challenges, uh, let me call it as because the, the Bible says for everything, sorry, I'm not putting the Bible in your presence, there are seasons and times. So has there been any bad moments that you, from your own perception, sir, in Bruno's? The bad moment was the moment uh, the council of the university decided that we have to strictly comply with the directive of NUC on the balance between the administrative staff and the academic staff. It's, it was supposed to be ratio one to four. One administrative staff to four academic staff. Because first of all, the university is an academic institution. The students go there in order to study. So we don't need many administrative staff. But in the case of Bowen, the situation was a reverse. We had more administrative staff than academic staff. So when the council decided that there must be a change, we have to comply. And all the people with uh, either queries or uh, one bad record or the other, or the people they felt are redundant. Well, and they wouldn't need when the council took decision to rationalize and uh, relieve some staff of their duties, majorly the administrative staff. There was an opera. And when that opera came, I, that was not part of the council, <laughs> it was my name that was in the YouTube and social media. I they say, you are a thief. You have taken the forbidden fruit. You cannot talk again. <laughs> it was so bad, so bad, but uh, if you are in this position and you are not a shock absorber, then you, 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 should, you should just step down. I've faced so many harassments in this position of leadership, and uh, I've taken it as part of leadership. It's not anything strange any longer. Bowen University is a pragmatic, advancing, and growing university. A university that is expanding will be a university that is adding to the curriculum year after year. I can look back in the last 10 years on the number of courses that Bowen University has added. Uh, that's a growing university. If they had no demand for what they are adding, they wouldn't be adding more and more. <coughs> so it's an expanding university. It's a growing university. Not only that, in Bowen University is a university with tall ambition. Tall ambition and the administrators are working hard towards making Bowen University the university in Nigeria that everybody would like to be, especially on the issue of godliness, excellence, and the leadership, which has to do with uh, the spirit of the enterprising spirit that the university is inculcating into the students. So that when they are out, they may not need to be looking primarily for a white collar job. They can be creative and uh, be on their own. And many of them now are graduating and starting companies from the little to something big. 
some of their products the vice chancellor had brought to me with a sense of pride to see what the, the students are, who graduated uh, are doing outside, creating a world for themselves. Even when I was not retired, I was writing books, <laughs> as busy as my schedule was. Uh, I was called into the ministry as pastor evangelist. I was called into the ministry as pastor evangelist, and I have decided to go back into my evangelistic ministries. Uh, conducting revivals from place to place, organizing, uh, if they are, the environment allows it, open air crusades, or helping churches to conduct open air crusades. And not only that, I, you know that I was a television evangelist too, ministering on television stations both the NTA and uh, then BCOS. So what I intend to do is to go back and pick up my television ministries, uh, if God provides for it. Uh, but now it will break beyond Baptist Church. It will go into the church university, the church university, ministering the word of God. And also, from my leadership experience, uh, empowering upcoming leaders through seminars and conferences to give them ideas, leadership ideas that can help them succeed in life, just like an empowerment ministry. On this note, sir, I want to say thanks to, thank you for all the things that you have contributed, sir. Like, uh, this time at home, that has been our own papa. Reverend Dr. S.O.A. Ayokule, the President of the Nigerian Baptist Convention and as well the President of the Christian Association of Nigeria. He has been the co-chairman of the Baptist World of the Interreligious Council. Nigeria Interreligious Inter Inter Council. Uh, then he's a member of the ESCO of the Baptist World Alliance. And as a matter of fact, he's an ESCO member for the World Council of Churches. And presently he's still the visitor of Bowen University until the last days. Thank you. Uh, I want to say thank you for your time. Thank uh, you. I pray that God will give you strength uh, for you to be able to enjoy your holiday. I will say holiday. <laughs> you are not going to be tired. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, very thank you very much. God bless.